Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. Today we're going to be discussing uh, something in very interesting, the actually the name Jehovah and how it appears in the New Testament of the New World Translation or the Jehovah's Witness Leaders recent Bible translation. As many of you perhaps know, they have inserted that name 237 times, I believe, into the New World Translation, claiming that whenever the Old Testament was quoted, that the name Jehovah would appear, or did appear. Now, that's another video for another day. But think about this. There has been over 25,000 Bible manuscripts found and not one of them contain the Tetragrammaton in the New World Translation. I'll leave it at that. But interestingly enough, the Jehovah's Witness leaders, they seem to have not only stopped there, they've actually replaced the name of our Lord Christ with the name Jehovah in the New World Trent in the New Testament of the New World Translation Bible. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. And I'm going to be using Biblehub.com and I'm going to be using their interlinear Bible. Okay, so we can you you can actually see for yourself the original Greek and how the Jehovah's Witness leaders have, for lack of a better word, corrupted the scriptures to suit their benefit, their theology. Friends, brothers, that is a grave, grave sin. But they have no fear, so let's get into it here. Let's go to their Bible here online, and we're going to go to John chapter 6 verse 45 now notice this here it is written in the prophets they will all be taught and the footnote says or be those taught by Jehovah everyone who has listened to the Father and has learned comes to me okay now notice the word Jehovah the name appears here but let's go to the interlinear. Okay, we're going to go to John 6, 45. And we're going to do this with a few scriptures that I actually found. Uh, I, no, I don't want to translate. Okay, here it is. John 6, 45. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught of God. You see that? You see how they've corrupted the scriptures? Look at their translation. They have Jehovah in here, and it says God. Everyone, having heard from the Father and having learned, comes to me. It says God. The Tetragrammaton is not there. Lord is not there, which they used to justify inserting the name Jehovah in the New Testament. And neither is there. Oh, it's going to get worse, friends, brothers. Let's go this time to Acts chapter 12, verse 24. But the word of Jehovah went on growing and spreading. Let's go to the interlinear. Acts 12. 24 but the word of God grew and multiplied it's let's just keep on going here we'll let the scriptures speak for themselves let's stay in Acts here chapter 18 this time verse 21 but said goodbye and told them I will return to you again if Jehovah 
is willing and he put out to sea from Ephesus. Acts chapter 18 in the interlinear. Twenty one. But having taken leave and having said it behooves me by all means the feast coming to keep at Jerusalem again, I will return to you, God willing. He sailed from Ephesus. God, not Jehovah. You see that? Let's keep going. First Corinthians. I I, I it, it it amazes me how they would be so deliberate in doing this it it like the scripture says it behooves me first corinthians chapter 10 verse 9 neither let us put jehovah to the test as some of them put him to the test only to perish by the serpents now this is very insulting to christians so hold on as we see it in the interlinear Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 9. Neither should we test the Christ, as some of them tested, and by serpents perished. Yes, they have deleted the, the the name Christ and inserted Jehovah listen all I want is honesty that's it just be sincere with your members that's all I ever wanted as a member was just to have be be honest be truthful that my friends is flat-out lying corrupting of the scriptures let's go this time and keep on looking at this Galatians 3 chapter 3 verse 6 just as Abraham put faith in Jehovah and it was counted to him as righteousness interlinear Galatians 3 6 even as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness Theo or Theo however you pronounce it I have to look up the pronunciation but let's keep going here friends it just continues to go downhill from here I'm sorry to say Col Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 let the word of Christ, of the Christ reside in you richly in all wisdom. Keep on teaching and encouraging one another with psalms, praises to God, spiritual songs sung with gratitude, singing in your hearts to Jehovah. Now this is interesting because here in this scripture, you're going to see what's actually missing. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 in the interlinear. The word of Christ let dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing each other in psalms, hymns, and songs, spiritual with gratitude, singing in the heart of you to God. They have God. They have Christ. But where did the name Jehovah come from here? The Tetragrammaton is not there. Lord is not there. They just decided to insert it. That is dangerous, friends, brothers. Why would they do that? Let's keep going here. James. Where is James here? James chapter 1, verse 12. Happy is the man who keeps on enduring trial, because on becoming approved he will receive the crown of life, which Jehovah 
promised to those who continue loving him. Let's go to the interlinear. James 1, chapter 1, verse 12. I know a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, friends and brothers, are not going to be happy that the New World Translation Committee has done this. I hope that they would ask why they have corrupted the scriptures this way. I don't understand. Let's read it. Blesses the man who endures trial because approved, having been he will receive the crown of life that he has promised those loving him. Do you notice that neither God, nor Christ, nor the Tetragrammaton, no Lord, nor Jehovah appear here? It's just talking about he has promised. Obviously, it's speaking of Christ, but not according to the witnesses, because they have corruptly inserted Jehovah into this scripture. Where they came up with that, I have no idea. It was born in the minds of the Jehovah's Witness leaders. Let's go to chapter 2 this time, verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham put faith in Jehovah, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he came to be called Jehovah's friend. Get ready for this one here, because this one's actually very interesting. The interlinear, James chapter 2, verse 23 and was fulfilled the scripture saying believed moreover Abraham God fail and it was counted to him for righteousness and a friend of fail God he was called I I'm at a loss for words friends and brothers I really am because this goes beyond trying to justify inserting the name Jehovah over Lord, which they blame the scribes, I believe. But this, this goes beyond that, friends and brothers. This is literally a corruption of the scriptures. But let's keep going. It doesn't end there, friends. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 13. And you can look this up in whatever tool that you use, Greek translation. You can look it up yourself and you will see the same thing that we are looking at here today. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 13, And again I will put my trust in him, and again look, I and the young children whom Jehovah gave me. Let's go to the interlinear, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 13 and again I will be trusting in him and again behold I and the children whom me has given God fails let's keep going I'm exhausted already it's just it exhausts me that it, it tires me out mentally that they would do something so corrupt. It's incredible. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12. As you await and keep close in mind the presence of the day of Jehovah, through which the heavens will be destroyed in flames and the elements will melt in the intense heat. Let's go to the interlinear. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12 that was 2 my apologies it's 3 oh, okay let's go to 3 and it's 12 chapter 3 verse 12 Express, expecting and hastening the coming of the day of God you see that Again, the Tetragrammaton nor Lord appear here, yet they justify somehow, some way, 
replacing God with the name Jehovah. Now we're going to move on to the last one here in, well, let's first look it up here in the New World Translation in Revelation. And uh, this one is a bit confusing. Let's read. Chap Revelation chapter 15 verse 3. They were singing the song of Moses and the slave of God and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and wonderful are your works, Jehovah God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of eternity. Take note of this word, eternity. Eternity means forever, everlasting, however you want to translate that but let's let's see what the translation actual translation is here in the interlinear and it's revelation chapter 15 verse 3 and here it is and they are singing the song of moses of the servant of god and the song of the lamb saying great and wonderful are the works of you lord God, the Almighty, righteous and true are the ways of you, O King of the nations. Who is the King? Christ. He is the King of the nations. Yet, they have translated, the New World Translation Committee, or Jehovah's Witness leaders, have translated it, King of eternity eternity and nations are different let's go to you would see it's ethnon ethnon okay that is the greek now let's look because in the following verse four it actually says has the word nations which actually should be here as well but they translate it as eternity. Why? First, let's look and make sure that this is correctly translated. Okay? It's ethnon, nations. The following verse. Who, no, not, should fear you, O Lord, and will glorify the name of you, for you alone are holy, for all the nations. Ethne, 1484. Same thing, Gentiles, 1484, is this one not 1484? It is, it's the 1484, it's the same thing. It's derived from the same word, you see that? But there is a reason why they didn't want Christ or, or uh, Jehovah or, or actually Jesus as king of anything much less the nations why do we say that because if a member a jehovah's witness member reads this in this in this way king of of the nations king of nations they will automatically connect christ with that and know that it is not jehovah that is supposed to be here it's actually supposed to be correctly translated lord god the Almighty. Yes, He is the Almighty. But see, that's the reason, because why do we say that? Because He is. He is the King of the nations. He was the one that's going to be King. King of King, Lords of Lords. Let's look at that. They would automatically think, Daniel. Where's Daniel here? Daniel. Chapter 7 verse 14 and to him there were giving rulership honor and a kingdom that the people's nations and language groups should all serve him his rulership is an everlasting rulership that will not pass away and his kingdom will not be destroyed and again if you guys remember the son is supposed to give the kingdom over to the father but there again, the Trinity comes into play. Otherwise, 
How is it that his kingdom, Christ's kingdom, it won't never pass away, will never end, will never be destroyed? His rulership, it says, forever. But that's another topic. But see again here, he is the king of the nations. That is deliberate. That is why they did it. But let's look at another where it clearly says that the Lord is king of the nation. Matthew chapter 25 verse 32 all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people from one another just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats nations again the son of man the Lord lastly let's go to Revelation one more time this time chapter 12 verse 5 and she gave birth to a son, a male, who is to shepherd all the nations with an iron rod. This is the reason they fear allowing this connection in the mind of the reader. Yet, they correctly translate it for Revelation chapter 15 verse 4 the word nations they correctly translated it for that verse it's clear uh, friends that there has been a deliberate corruption of the New World Translation scriptures of the Jehovah's Witnesses leaders they are guilty I'm afraid and I say that with all due respect but they are guilty of sin grave sin in Revelation it says do not add do not take away but they are uh, have no fear of God We'll get into another topic tomorrow. I thank you for your time. If any of you will be watching the Super Bowl, enjoy it. And I thank you for your time. I know it's a busy day because of it, but we always make time for our Lord Christ. Thank you, and we'll see you again tomorrow, friends. May God bless you indeed.